That's right, y'all. The honey locust hive is trying to swarm on us yet again. I just don't know why they don't like their new home. Smoke a little bit. Just smoking like right off around this rim. We just caught the swarm two days ago. This is a swarm off of the CC hive. When they swarmed, they went 25 feet up into a tree on a very windy day. We had to pull over our horse trailer. We put a ladder on top of it and caught them that way. And I sustained a pretty tough sting to the nose through my veil. As you guys can see, I'm taking every precaution this time. We've got our smoker going, we've got gloves, we're fully suited, and we're being as cautious as we can because when we caught these guys the first time, they were a little aggressive. We're still a little unsure as to why this hive is trying to swarm again. Now today, it stormed earlier in the day and got really, really hot and humid. And that's when I got the call from Mark saying that the honey locust hive looked like they were trying to swarm and just had a failure to launch type moment. So here we are catching them and putting them back in again. They're acting like they're saying home again. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but you were home the whole time. So now that I've actually got the majority of the colony back into the new, I needed to figure out a way to sweeten the deal to get these bees to stay where I wanted them to stay. So I decided to break in to the Buckeye hive, take a frame of honey and give it to this hive. It's kind of like giving them a housewarming present. sometimes to, to gauge what's going on with bees and I can see why some people do take a very hands-off stance with them and just say hey if they stay they stay if they don't they don't they were super out, aggressive really my eye is still very swollen <laughs> my nose and apparently I got stung in the arm and then yeah and Mark had a delayed reaction now it's really bad yeah <laughs> it's like stung. rock hard there's like an egg under his skin it's ridiculous and then to top it off We've had two does give us surprise babies yeah. a couple days ahead of time. So you guys will be seeing that, but it has just been non-stop on Mulberry Branch Farm. I had like a chores list of today and I didn't get any of my chores. Well, work. no, he didn't get any of them done. Of course he took the day off work, so it's, it always goes a little sideways when he takes the time off. y'all there's just enough action around this and they I mean because it's actually one of the first pretty warm days that we've had in the last week it's been getting really cold at night and with that that means that it takes a little bit longer for it to get warm enough for them to want to come out so that when it finally is warm enough for them to come out they're trying to hurry and take advantage of the daylight just like we kind of do in homesteading we try to take as advantage as much time and daylight that we can to make sure we get our stuff done so you guys can see i'm kind of staging them right here to move into their new home i've already got some bees landing on it but it's because i'm interrupting the flow of traffic and that's actually why i've put it there i'm hoping that this will be easier for the forager bees to like run into it and be like oh yeah this is home so yeah but it's just active enough that i really <laughs> don't want to get stung in the face get them in my hair so i'm gonna go ahead and take a minute put on my jacket and put on some gloves I probably won't even like bother smoking unless like they all of a sudden <laughs> act like they really need it, in which case I will. But I'm gonna go ahead and move them in to their new brood box and let them call it home sweet home. Oh, it's just a little bump. It's just a little bump. So these guys have actually been in there, this nuke, for a little over a week. And oh boy, look at that. Get that. So they're trying to already build comb. So I'm just gonna kind of put these guys right over here because I'll probably just like dump them in. I don't want to make. I don't want to tick them off yet. So yet. Oh god. As you can see, there's lots of bees. 
I'm carefully moving them. Oh, you guys are doing really, really good. Are we laying eggs yet? They're preparing for it because they've got a nice, nice comb starting to be built out. They're way ahead already of See, they've been in here for just under two weeks. Look how much work they've gotten done. I hate to do that to them because they built that off of the frame of honey that I gave them. But I will probably leave this out and let them, you know, let them have it. I'll probably leave it a little ways away so that all the hives have access to it to reuse their sort their resources. Because I mean, it is just such a shame to see them not get to use these resources. I have to be really careful about where the queen may be too because there's still a lot of bees in here. You guys can see right in there, like right here, is where they've made some comb. This comb attached over here. So I probably should clean that up, but I really want to just let them have that. They'll do their own thing and I can clean up later. But you guys can see they're already kind of figuring out this is their new home. I just need to get these guys from here to here. Hey, little sisters. Hey, little sisters. Here we go. their rock on top. Probably will switch it out for something smaller. But for right now, this will do. So these guys were getting a little testy, just a little loud, nothing really crazy. But there you go, I had my smoker on hand. But it looks like, you guys can tell, like the air is pretty full of bees right now. But these are just forager bees that are doing exactly what the blackberry hive, which is the BB hive over there, which is the last swarm that we caught. So this is the honey locust hive foragers saying, okay, our box moved a little bit, but that's why I also moved it just from there and moved it forward. So they'd almost run into it coming home. It's a little higher off the ground than, than what they're used to, but they'll figure it out. They'll figure out that the queen's in there and that her pheromones will help them follow her to their new home. And you can see, I've just got some little sisters. They're just kind of chilling out. I got them chilling out on my on my camera as well but these guys are not being crazy they're just kind of this is just you know normal hustle and bustle when you move we go through the same thing when we switch up houses there's a lot of learning the new digs and figuring out where they're at and where they're going so this will be just fine i am going to move this away because i'm going to let other hives rob this out but i don't want it too close to this new hive while they're establishing so i'll probably take this and move it like way out over there somewhere so that there, it's where I'm not encouraging robbing or confrontation between my four hives. In all honesty, I still cannot believe I'm telling you my four hives. So is there a possibility that this hive could swarm again? Absolutely. I actually expect to try to do a split from the CC hive anyways, just because like their population is a lot higher. This was a large swarm nothing like the size of the blackberry or the bb hive their swarm was actually really small that's why i kind of think that it came from the buckeye hive because the buckeye hive wasn't doing that great when it came to population or just the robustness of their hive so it kind of makes sense that that smaller swarm would have come from a smaller less populated um hive and the reason they swarm guys it's my fault usually when bees swarm they've seen the roof they know there's no room left. So you've got a queen either leaves with half the colony and flies away with them and lets the virgin queen, the new newly hatched queen, take over and do her own thing. Or sometimes it can be virgin queens that 
fly with half of the colony in their swarm and take and go find some place to set up shop and then take good mating flights. So yeah, sometimes that's why you might see swarms that swarm, you catch them and you put them up, but then they swarm again. And it, the mating flights are, from what I've read, I've never really witnessed one, are supposed to be sporadic. So they'll move around a lot more. Whereas like these guys set up shop in this tree and those guys shut up shop in the blackberry bushes. So it just kind of, it just kind of depends. And really like just based off of their behavior and what I've read, I'm making guesses at what's actually going on. Maybe we can do our best at guessing what's going on with these bees, but ultimately they're separate animals. <laughs> they're super complex insects, super complex. So I mean, we're really just taking a guess based off of experiences and, and observations as to what's really going on. But really, I mean, we're pretty much guessing. <laughs> <laughs>